All right, so hello guys and welcome to our session. So today we'll have Miss Ilham Fikri as a guest. Yes. She's an engineer, an entrepreneur, and a PhD student at the University of Muhammad I in Ujda. That's true. She, she will be discussing with us and sharing few information about smart cities, maybe especially about Berkan. So first of all, I would like Mrs. Ilham to introduce herself more and more. All right. Well, hello, everybody. First of all, thank you so much to have me with you. I really appreciate to share what I have uh, as a small experience, because uh, like you, I was one day a student and I, I had something special and uh, some creativity some that I wanted to work on it. So uh, when I see kids or young uh, uh, people like you, I would like to share and I would like to encourage uh, others to do the same or even better. Because uh, as you, I like to tell my story, like you, I had a bachelor, I mean a baccalaureate in science. Then um, I had to decide whether I will study in Morocco or abroad. Uh, this discussion were, was very uh, serious with my parents because one of them wanted to send me and the other one didn't. Uh, and uh, I had to choose. Well, uh, I chose to stay in my country because I had in my mind if I didn't make the change in my place, where, where I will do it. So, and uh, after that, um, I start in, uh, at the University of uh, Muhammad I in Wujda. At the beginning, everybody was telling me, well, you went for the faculty, that's it, you are ruined, you have no, no future. And I proved them wrong because I made uh, my first two years uh, in um, physics. I actually, it's something that I never liked. I was good at everything except physics. But uh, when I started uh, at the university, it was something that that's another physics. Uh, that I didn't uh, see during the um, college or university uh, or um, high school. So since then, I became to be very good in physics. And after that, I had the chance, or I worked hard. I I like to to use the word chance, but the truth is. If you work hard, you will go for it. And then I start my uh, bachelor on civil engineer and environment, environment and civil engineering studies. And then I finished for my master's degree. Again, I had the opportunity to go to France and I canceled that and I preferred to stay in Morocco again. This time I went for my PhD. And at the moment I start PhD, I, I went for internship around like in Croatia, uh, France, uh, Belgium. And I start to know the difference where, for example, the European Union is going in their strategies, how they are working. And I try to bring that experience to, to our country. So uh, we are, uh, I mean, uh, we had a friendship during my courses, I had friends that I had for more than 10 years. We were all together grouped for a, for a, for a, I mean, in different fields. And this is how we get uh, into a lot of things like innovation. So uh, we start to innovate together. It was a hobby in the beginning, uh, next to our studies. And then we met, we were all studying in Wujda, and one of us came to Berkan and met uh, Mr. Governor Mohammed Ali Hibbuha. And uh, he was fascinated with, his, with all the ideas we were working on it, just prototypes and ideas between us. And then we found that our, this governor is working on smart cities platform. So, and we were just, we, we joined the team. So uh, I will let you, uh, uh, I mean, I made a little bit introduce uh, uh, of myself and how I get here and how did I met your governor. And now I will, we will ask, I, I guess, Mohammed, you will ask me questions or you want me to go for it? 
Okay. Well, it's not me who will ask the questions. The the students will, you know, will raise their hands and we'll give them the permission to ask okay. the questions. Okay, so uh, I will finish how, how what what Birken is working on. So I don't know if uh, someone heard before about um, the how a smart city is. So a smart city is something that has uh, more relation to something digital. We know that digital gadget, com uh, vocal commands or uh, recognitions and stuff like that. They are all together together, and we can put it on a system that we can call smart. So in your, in your city, there is uh, the the governor started with uh, started with with uh, a smart government. What does it supposed to mean? For example, you are a citizen and you want to go to the, your administration. The traditional way was to go to uh, to the administration and then wait for a long line and get to the, for example, the employer and then wait for him to answer you and then maybe he could tell you until tomorrow and or maybe they can tell you the, the employee is not here. You have to wait other days and so on. So this this kind of problems, this is this is not smart. So what is the smart? Is to put something digital that could help make the service very quick, very quick, or it could solve a problem. For example, you have the first uh, annex digital annex in Morocco. It's uh, or that is operational. You can find others in other cities, but you can uh, you have to know that they consider uh, that Berkane is the first city or the or it's the capital of digital. That's not uh, it's not uh, us or the team who said that, but it's uh, um, the visitors, the foreigners that came to Berkane who made this. Uh, uh, I mean, this name for, for Burkan. So, for example, for this annex, what you, you know, if you want, for example, to change your address, you want to go to, um, to the annex and then administrative annex and then wait for the guy to find him and then ask him to, to approve if you are living in that address or not. So sometimes you cannot find him because the guy has to check some stuff outside the, of the administration and he has to come back. So what was the solution is to put a system where you can come just with your ID and you ask, you put your request there and, and the guy is out with his tablet. He can confirm that quickly. So no need to wait and no need to meet him. and. Uh, many, many problems solved at, at, in one click. So then you can get your, your uh, paper with, in, a, uh, in a fast way and without having troubles. So also there is uh, another service. For example, there, there is an app that uh, citizen can, could help to change. For example, you were working, working somewhere in Berkan and you find I don't know, a trash that is in a very bad situation, you can take a picture of it and then in that app, it will send as, a, as an information or as a, uh, for example, a warning, look what is going on here. And the, the service in charge get that picture and they, they get intermediate um, uh, treatment for that situation. I gave trash as an example. You can you can find other other things. Uh, you can know also that there is some cameras installed in Berken for very high uh, technology that could zoom. For example, there is one on the top of the uh, government uh, place. It could zoom until the exit of Berken. So you can see the face with every detail. Uh, also, they were working on, for example, on the transportation sector. They are working to, uh, to bring uh, smart uh, 
ecological buses, electric buses for 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 Birkin. They also before to do this, what what was the background of all of this? We used something we call SIG, System, uh, system Informatic Geographic. So this system is, uh, it's a software like named ArcGIS, if you want to, to check or Google it somewhere. So this uh, software, what we do is we go for, for, uh, for uh, a f in the field, we take collection of uh, informations or data and we put it on that, software and it give us the situation in x y z of everything outside of the can uh, outside in the city for example uh, the houses like it's like gps but it's more uh, more uh, developed because we can use those data collected to to put any system we want for example, there is a company who wants to make, for example, uh, electric buses. They can get to this data, make an analysis of it, of it, and then they can find where where buses could circulate in the city, or where can the stop can be, or where can I mean it could be very easy. So this is smart. Um, also, everything in your city or I'm not talking just about the city, I'm talking about all uh, Birkin and around, I mean, Ahfir and all the parts of the province is, uh, is um, digital and uh, digitalized in, in, a, in a website, uh, in a software. And it's all the time refreshed. Uh, we used uh, a technology that called geomapping. So this geomapping, Anything that is uh, uh, put as in geography is all the time updated uh, with, with, with data. So with this data, we can say that we can start to put systems smart in our city. Uh, and our governor first started with his administration. Now you can see with the COVID, he were, uh, they were one of the cities that are efficient uh, during this, uh, this uh, I mean, they were really efficient during, during the pandemic. And, uh, and also uh, they, with that system, they could uh, find where there is the need to make a solution. For example, Berkan first, who had uh, the problem of students who, left, who leave school, very early. Why? Because they they had a problem of transportation. So going to those places to see where why students are not going to school made uh, made the team or or the government to put to see that through that system. And then they put buses with just for those students. And then now Berkan is one of the. Uh, the best regions that all their students are going to school. So you can see how the digital uh, made uh, an impact on, on your city. Yes, I guess Mohamed Sinan has a question or something. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mrs. Ilham, for your time. And I have a question, you know, what you've been saying from the beginning of the class, it's it's first time the, to hear the, those informations, those information. Um, do, don't you think that there is a problem of communication between the worker, you know, the team and citizens? Because you said that one app is operational, but I don't think that someone know about it. Um, yes. That's my question. Exactly. To uh, what we noticed since, because uh, Mr. Governor was working with this since 2018 or before when he came here, what happened is he was uh, at the beginning working with his team to make the platform. And then when we got the platform and he convinced the Ministry of um, Interior with his uh, vision and why it's efficient, now they are starting to come and to see this, what is he working on it. So what we are, now we move to the next level is to inform citizens about it. That's why last time, I mean, last March in the 
the last three days, we made a, a second edition of a forum, uh, digital forum, where we launched the application that I told you about. So you can see that we are now working or uh, how to implement citizen in this. So you can say that we've spent some few years to put everything ready. And we are also with my association, we are trying to make activities to uh, to show citizens what what they have in their city so that they can go with it for example last activity we we noticed for uh, for example the taxi drivers didn't didn't know how to use gps so how could for example tell him i want to go to to that place or that place and he he don't even know how to use gps so what we do we took all the drivers of the buses and the taxi drivers, and we took them for a for a um, for a training how to use, for example, GPS. So first, now we found that we have to fight for for um, digital, uh, like you can say, illiterate illiterate uh, um, uh, digitalization. For example, you can see that everybody has a, a smartphone, but they use it just for YouTube or for Facebook. They don't use other apps. So we try to make some research and now we are working on treating those kind of um, misunderstanding or misuse to bring everybody with us on board. So uh, this way we are all working together. Uh, and I guess it could, uh, because since the platform is ready and uh, trying to uh, improve this relationship with, with citizen, it will be very fast to bring them aboard. It won't be uh, in the case of if we start with the citizen and you tell him, uh, hello, I want, we want to make smart city. He won't be able to, to accept the idea. But if you come to him and you tell him, look, this app, if you know how to click this and this, you can get this. And he will see the, the solution. So seeing the solution will, will, at least he will not imagine it and he will believe on it. So he will make improvement to uh, keep up with that technology. You, you, you can see how uh, we uh, try to do. So I guess um, uh, there is a lot of things we worked on it. Uh, some stuff that we we brought with us since we uh, we already worked on innovation and some stuff we already founded with Mr. Governor and one complete the other. What we are trying is to be contagious in a good way. So, uh, I mean, uh, we are working on high tech and also and innovation. For example, lately we I can see some of the students uh, has the chance to see uh, the Fab Lab. It's a fabrication laboratory. This this laboratory is uh, had um, a lot of three D printers. Those three uh, D printers we will use it for prototypes for those who uh, who want to make ideas we can also we can teach them about uh, this kind of technology by the way i was uh, thinking uh, in the upcoming days when we want to do start a uh, training we will inform mr khalid and then yeah, we can get students from you that can come and see how it works we also we have um, uh, CNC machines. Uh, there are machines that cut woods, uh, cut uh, uh, steel, a uh, lot of materials. So we have with laser, and uh, the, it's a new technology that you can uh, use to fabricate stuff. And also, we have a part of um, electronics where you can put. Uh, the basics for for robots or for systems or for automatization. So this is three main uh, sectors on on that fab lab, and we have good um, team that can uh, show you what they can do, and they can maybe open for you uh, for more creative ideas. So um, 
I, if you have any uh, question about that technology, how it works, or why why we use it, or what is what is exactly, I can uh, explain it more. So, uh, Mrs. Ilham, uh, so first of all, thank you for your presentation and your explanation. Well, now maybe we will we'll be moving to the question part. So, uh, so guys. Just raise your hands if you have any question, and we'll be more than welcome to to hear you. So we start with Mrs. Saad Miloki. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Ilham, to be with us uh, tonight. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, just a question. Um, your uh, work is uh, related to citizen citizens. And uh, do you have some project for enterprises who want to be more and more digit digitalized or not, or is not the goal of your, uh, uh, your job? Actually, I am a, oh, I'm a co-founder of a, a cooperative Burbot. It's a, a, the first industrial uh, cooperative. Uh, as I said, I am one of a big team. Uh, I had other colleagues that have uh, different uh, fields. So what we did in this uh, cooperative, we start uh, we start to do business for for our interest. But when we notice that we can help or we want to share, we 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 joined the. ADN, it's uh, Association Développement Numérique, Numerical Development Association. So this is the association who made the, the last edition of the forum, digital forum that I told you. And since then, since we are a board, we tried just to, uh, to show what is going on to, uh, because one day, uh, I remember when we had those crazy ideas in digital and innovation, uh, nobody believed on us. So since now we had the chance and uh, we had Mr. Governor who listens to us and also who guide us and, and who helped us to make our dream come true, we try now to show what we have to bring others for us, with us and board. So for uh, you can find already people, citizens that started, uh, started new businesses just because of what they saw on us when we talked about CNC machines or we, we talked about hydroponic system that we worked on it. They, you can see group of young people that uh, started their startups or their uh, cooperative uh, just because they, they uh, saw what we, what we did. So our main goal is to improve uh, the life of the citizen by using digital. And we always take that on consideration, whether in the association or in the co cooperative, I mean, uh, or in the business part. So first of all, for us is to lift, uh, to be part of the change and to bring everybody on board. And this is what we are uh, planning to. So we have many, many projects. If anyone wants to join us, we are more than welcome to have them, to have you all uh, a part with us in this. I guess there is someone high up there who's, who raised their yes. hand. So, yeah, so first of all, thank you, Mrs. Ilham. Well, I think because uh, we have a lot of students that are right now currently in high up, so okay. they're watching us. Okay. And maybe even from there, we have students that will ask questions. So as I see, it's Asma Talbi. Yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. And I wanted to thank Ms. Ilham for being here. My question was, um, uh, as, a, you know, as a Moroccan person, if I had a chance to go study abroad, I would actually go there without no, with like no hesitation. And I was really curious to know, why did you choose and how did you see the potential in our country, Burkan, uh, and our country, Morocco, and the city, Burkan, actually? And because it was really shocking news for us to know that Burkan is considered a capital smart city. Thank you so much. Welcome. Well, this question at first 
Oh, I had a very big argument uh, in family, especially big family, uncles, aunts, because they said, well, if you go there, you it will be easier and, and many things. Well, I have to tell you, my mother is professor uh, and she used to tell me when I was a new age that, that uh, our country to have students in the baccalaureate, they spend... Uh, 120 million uh, cents, uh, uh, it means um, uh, 1 million 20 dirhams to get a student in the baccalaureate. So after the baccalaureate, they spend more because we study, for example, in uh, public schools. And then I, I try to understand how France work. Uh, when, when I notice what is France doing, they, they put some um, fees or some uh, uh, taxes on, uh, on companies. Why? Just because they are uh, having engineers working aboard. Those engineers, they are, uh, for example, France, uh, ask task, taxes from companies because they are having engineers for what? To uh, pay uh, their schools or their studies. What, what happened when a Moroccan student go, go there, he will, for example, if he already have a diploma, he's going already ready and he work in a company that uh, paid taxes for, for that country for something that he didn't learn there. He learned it in his country. So why would I go to France and uh, make France paid for my studies and I didn't study there. So that was, uh, I feel the shame that I will take my country uh, investment on me and I go to give it to another country. So this is one of the reasons. And the second is when I went there, I had uh, the interview, everything went well. They, I tried to make, make any, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, com complications to not get me, but they, they did because, uh, I don't know, they liked uh, what I, I, uh, I showed them, but I felt that I, I was strange because the way I, I was received, I was received very good, but I could feel that they, they didn't like that I would get a very high position or my CV is overqualified for them. For example, sometimes your CV is better than the boss you are working for. So you can see that uh, they will mistreat you with time. So, uh, and then I said, why would I, well, why would I experience everything, uh, uh, all of this? And, uh, and I could make a change in my country. I could be thankful for my country. And uh, when I came back, I just made the decision, I will go for a PhD. It's not easy, it's really hard. But when you sit and you make um, an update of all what you have done or all the achievement that you, are, that you did, you really feel that um, joy and that happiness that you were looking for. Because uh, it's something that really, really, really uh, you will approve it because for example if i i always give this uh, um, examples in the kitchen because we are women and we like to cook and uh, you, you have for example women who want to bake a bread she was doing a lot of sport movements to make the bread very good at the at the, at the end so anything you give effort on it and uh, at, the, at the end, you, you really admire the results. So this is what I am in. Uh, it was always a challenge for me. And I really, I really liked to challenge. Sometimes I get disappointed to the point to see, oh, why did I didn't go there and it will be easier. But after, for example, when we made the event and for example, two ambassadors came uh, ministers and they were really shocked and you can see how they admire your work 
uh, how you worked on team and uh, other people are very proud of what you are doing and uh, you can see that Mr. Governor is uh, proud of you and your parents and you can feel that you are getting results and it's much, much better to go somewhere else. Hope Thank I you. answered. Thank you so much. Welcome. Well, I think right now we move to Mr. Mohamed Radamumna. And by the way, guys, in high up, if there's nobody that wants to ask, so please uh, lower your hand. Well, Mr. Mohamed Rada, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate giving me the chance to speak. First of all, I want to thank Mrs. Uh, uh, Ilham for, uh, for attending this class, and I really appreciate your efforts. So my question okay. is, after realizing these ideas of smart cities, do you believe that there is a reaction between citizens and the government or uh, not yet? Thank you. We start, we start to see results, especially with the COVID, because with the COVID, you, you can see that only digital worked on that uh, period. So and now we can see that people are more open to the idea of digital. Before, like in 2017, 18, and 19, when you were you were talking about digital, uh, well, they say it's something luxurious. Uh, when you say, I want to make, for example, we, we were saying this in the, our university, we were talking about virtual visits, we were talking about virtual labor laboratory for chemistry and physics. They were even professors, that are uh, in a high level, like they are all doctors and they are in the university, they didn't accept the idea. They said, this is luxurious. We don't have classrooms, we don't have chairs, we don't have this, we don't have that. So they were always thinking about something material and what is digital is something really far and very, really luxurious. But with COVID, when, when, when problems start, how we can keep people studying, we found that our service, for example, in e-learning at the university was weak. So students couldn't follow, keep up their courses and they had to make a big effort to, be, to get it uh, again. So you can see uh, COVID helped a lot to, to make a place for digital and to show it's not something luxurious. It's something that it's a need and something that should be with you every day. So this is how, how it helps to convince uh, either government or uh, citizens about yeah, thank uh, you. digital. Thank you. Okay, thank you both. Okay. Well, right now we uh, move. So guys, can you raise your hands, please? Uh, Mr. Luay, yes. yes. Thank you. So uh, thank you for uh, having for being here today and thank you for sharing your experience with us. So I just want to ask you that uh, you said that uh, you, you worked many years in this technology and on this on this app and you said that uh, you will share it to the citizens. So how you will share it, uh, how you influence and introduce this technology because you know it's very new for our citizens and uh, uh, I thought that you maybe you will do some tests. For example, we'll take a, a kid, a teenager, and an adult, or maybe you do you make a video and you explain how to use the app. Okay, so what uh, we do, we uh, usually uh, we used to do, uh, as I said, a big event and uh, an open uh, invitation for everybody. Sometimes you can find uh, an old guy interested more than a young one and sometimes it's the opposite so what we what we do is um, always to bring everybody in an easy way for example either it's for example if I want to explain you something digital maybe your generation is uh, more comprehensive or very easy to to get to keep up with you but if I go, for example, for the generation of our parents, it would be first a little bit you have to teach them how to do it. Then you can tell them what, what to, to get from it. So uh, at, le at least what, what we notice that 
uh, even in uh, administrations, there is some employees that are used to work with paper. They don't know how to use a computer. Or if they know how to use it, they use just Microsoft Office, nothing more, nothing less. So we were, we, we, we spread, some of us are working with administrations to get employers uh, in the level to be uh, ready for the technology or ready for the digital. And some of us went for schools, for students uh, in events, for example, the one that you had uh, before where uh, your friends came to see our lab. Um, there we can find young students. And then we are doing big events to bring others. We still have a lot of work to do and we still want a big team to, to work on it. And uh, nothing is easy, but nothing is impossible. So that's what we are working on it. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you. So right now we move back to high up and we have uh, Mr. Ryan Ayub uh, Benzera, maybe, sorry. Yeah, so the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So uh, my question is, how can you deal with uh, like uh, feedback and uh, criticism and complain from customers? And let's say you give us advice on how to uh, deal with it for us. Okay, so if I understand, you are asking me when you have um, uh, something you 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 did something and that you had a bad uh, bad uh, reflection to it or a bad opinion about it. How how do you do? Yes. Well, first of all, if if we we heard the first thing um, we heard in you at the university or before university at high school, we, we won't do anything because uh, some of us uh, is an inventor. There is Mohamed Bouchish is a guy uh, that has, uh, that, that he was innovating. He's an inventor. He made a lot of uh, gadgets and a lot of smart stuff. And he was always out of the box. If Mohamed, for example, was doing these first things, the first thing was, for example, the, his parents were saying, what are you doing? This is a waste of time. What are you doing? This is rubbish. This is crazy. This is, uh, uh, try to live. You are living in Morocco. You're not living in USA or something. So if he kept hearing this, you will not find him the CEO of the cooperative and, and uh, PhD students and also doing a lot of things. And even when any, any group from any country in the world, when they come to meet him, they say that he's the best. So you can see if he didn't work on himself, believe on himself, he wouldn't do anything. So digital is the same. If we heard at the first time we were at the university and we were talking about smart boards, we were talking about interactive boards, we were talking about um, uh, virtual visits. They were telling us this is luxurious, this is uh, makeup. They call it makeup. This is not a technology, this is a waste of time, this is a waste of resource. Forget about it. But if we forget about it, we wouldn't meet Mr. Governor we wouldn't do what we are doing right now. So if, uh, what my advice is to believe on yourself self, and uh, uh, ignore all the negative um, things and all the negative uh, opinions because those negative opinions, it's just the limit of other, others' bra brain. That's not the limit of your brain. So this is my advice. For, for all of you. Thank you. Welcome. I guess my head. I lost. I lost where is Mohammed, <laughs> the animator. <laughs> but yeah, you I think go uh, is not here. So uh, hello. So first of all, uh, I want to thank you for uh, being with us uh, today. So I really appreciate the information you've shared. 
So my question is, uh, how do you see Berkan from uh, now uh, 10 years? Wow, that's a good question. If we keep on doing what Mr. Governor is doing, I can see, uh, because lately when, when we did the event, I had uh, we had the visits uh, of the ambassador of Korea, and he was really interested to to help in the the digital of of uh, Birkan. So I can see that Birkan will be the first in Morocco or maybe in Africa to to be a very digital city. Uh, and uh, also, um, I had to defend this idea on the board of. Uh, of uh, the commune of Birkan. They were uh, elected uh, persons there. They were saying, well, digital didn't work in Casablanca. How come it will work in Birkan? That was, <laughs> I said, well, this is the main idea. Casablanca is too big. And to come to implement a new system for something very already existing, it's very hard. So. Starting that with Birkan small, it will go uh, aside with every activity. And I gave an example that made them laugh. It was, I said, the Casablanca is the case of putting a shoes and then look for socks. So that was funny for them. And it was, it's not the case in Birkan. So we will start with digital, then we will go for high um, infrastructure. So it will be complete in both sides. And I guess Birkin will go very in a very good track. That's not what I'm saying. That's the said, this, uh, the, the words of everyone who visit Birkin. There, there were visitors from uh, USA, from Belgium, from France, from Spain, you, you name it, even Korea, they were here and they were really fascinated. Romania also. They were uh, Germany. They were fascinated of already what is in Birkin, and uh, uh, I guess there will be a very, very beautiful improvement in the upcoming years. Not even the ten years, just two, three, five years. That's enough to be uh, in the top. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you both. I'm really sorry for, for you know, getting out just to, due to some technical problems. Okay. Well, I think maybe we move to high up again. I see Mrs. Zainab. Um, thank you. Um, so my question is the following. It is kind of related to Asma's question, actually. Um, do you actually think that if you didn't stay in Morocco and um, instead finished your studies abroad, would you still have reached the same level of success or the things you've innovated or came up to? It's hard for me to hear you, but I will try to guess what you said. You said- Am I supposed to repeat? Oh, question? if you want, that would be better. Okay. Are you hearing me better right now? Good. Okay, so my question is, do you think that if you actually didn't stay in Morocco and instead finished your studies abroad, would you still have reached the same level of success or um, the things you've innovated or came up to? Well, uh, I always have that uh, principle of, if you didn't make you a change where you are, you won't do it anywhere. So uh, staying here or going abroad, it's something on me, on my DNA, being cre creative, being challenging, uh, like to do new things, try new things. This is a, a, a sort of adrenaline that I really like. And uh, I think if I was in, in another country, I would do the same. Uh, maybe the difference, I would be sad to, to, uh, to do it in another country and give them that uh, uh, privilege uh, instead of my country. And you can see that a lot of Moroccans that even they were born in foreigner countries, they always come back to Morocco. You can see the guy who uh, invent from France, he's Moroccan, France Moroccan, who was, who, he, he was born there. He, inv he uh, invent the, the hybrid car. 
but he gave the exclusivity to Morocco to, uh, to do the fabrication. So you can see he studied, he was born in France, studied in France, but he's origin, originally from Morocco. All his, uh, uh, you can see qualifications or um, um, person, uh, personal uh, achievements, he gave it to his country back. It's something that uh, you cannot feel. Maybe one day when you travel uh, abroad or even into another city, you will always feel that you are connected somehow. So I think if I was here or, uh, or another country, I would do the same. By the way, I'm doing already another PhD in, in China. I didn't go because just because of the COVID, but uh, you can see, I always had the chance to go there, to study there, to see what they are doing, to bring that back to my country. I can, uh, I mean, I can share with them what we have and learn from them too, but I always come back here because uh, uh, anyway, I'm really connected to what I'm, what I really like, it's just to give all my energy to, uh, to creativity. What I, uh, I studied in Marrakesh for a while, I mean, for all my childhood, in Marrakesh, they were uh, encouraging me to be creative. Uh, if you weren't creative, you are uh, uh, eliminated or you are, uh, you are getting bad grades or stuff like that. For example, you want to do a presentation, you should be creative, make, for example, a theater scene or something to explain that uh, uh, what you want to expose or what you want to uh, present. But if you bring a paper and you start to read, now you are a loser for them. So I grown up on this kind of things. And I grown up a place where I saw um, European people uh, uh, read books everywhere. So I was really jealous. Why we, we are, why we are not like them? I mean, what is the difference? So I start maybe to emit uh, uh, what they are doing. And I like to, when I saw France, for French people, or I don't know what their nationality, but bring in a book, I also take a book and read instead of looking to people, for example, waiting to pay a bill, I could, I could read two, three pages or four. So this is how, where I grow up. When I came to uh, Oriental region, uh, it was completely different because being here different was hard for me. Uh, I noticed that in school, I noticed that at the university, you should always be like the others and you should no, not find anything new. Don't be creative because um, it, it should be like this, normal, static, basic. And it killed me in the beginning. But what I did, for example, there is a professor who like presentation with uh, white uh, PowerPoint and uh, black writing. I do that for him. But it doesn't mean that I, it killed my creativity. I go back home, I could do drawing, I could choose templates, I can create ones, because this is what I like to do. That professor didn't uh, turn off my creativity. And I was always uh, ready to, to do something new or to do something different. I like to be different. Why should I be like others? And this is how I, I get, I guess, to what I am doing today. It's just a small experience for of a lot of that are like me. I can't hear Thank you. you. Thank comes. you. Yeah. Well, I think we go back to Mrs. Suad Miloki. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I have another question. Yes. Um, in Morocco, um, do we have other cities who uh, wants to follow the initiatives of Berkan, or it's uh, only a local initiative and the rest, uh, if they see that all is uh, fine, they will follow uh, maybe Berkan? Is that the goal of uh, your association or not? That's a very interesting question. Uh, in the beginning, when Mr. Governor was talking about uh, digital, nobody believed on it. And what happened after that, when he worked alone with his team, 
and he starts to put the first layers of data and it's, he starts to give some um, uh, uh, results of that work. Uh, first one to come to see, to pick a seat to see what is going on is the Oriental region where they came from Ujda to see what, what Mr. Governor is doing. Now they are, they are working uh, lately because I had that experience with them with my brother. My brother also worked on digital before me, before, before what I, because I am civil engineer uh, major, not like my brother. My brother is informatics and this is what he do for a living. He was at, at 2016. He, I remember that I attended a meeting with him in, in the uh, Oriental region and he was explaining digital for them and they were, weren't interested. The same people came here this year to see how Mr. Governor is doing that. So this is the first persons. Then I saw Rabat are coming here from time to time to see how we are processing stuff. Because at the beginning, Mr. Governor didn't have resources, I mean, financial resources to do this project. So what he did, he collected um, uh, internship students that they are working on development. And this, this, is, well, this was good for their studies. And that at the same time, it helped him to achieve progress. And one by one, he had the result what he had to, what he what he is having today. And those young students, they got their diploma, and now they are working with him in the government. So you can see it was a win-win situation, and it bring a lot of uh, results. And also, when 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 Mr. Uh, Korean um, uh, embassy were discussing with us uh, how they can help Birkan, they offered to Moroccan government the help for digital improvement. And then our government chose to make it in, Bir in uh, Bengirir and, uh, and also in Marrakesh, so in those, uh, you know, Bengirir because there is uh, low CP and stuff like that. And Marrakesh, because it's known for the big touristic city, it should be like that but they all admitted somehow that Birken was the first and they are always coming to see what is going on to go to applicate it there. So this is how it is in, in Morocco. Yeah. Okay. We are happy because, because it's, uh, you are sharing, uh, I told you in the beginning, I, we, we want to be contagious in a good way. Uh, bring this because after all, it will be good for the whole country, not just for Birken. And, uh, but it's good that we are from the first ones who did it. Thanks. Welcome. All right, thank you. So we move to Mrs. Zuiham Kidani. Zuiham Kidani, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Amin. And thank you, Ms. Inha, for being here with yes. us today. Uh, my question is the following. Um, do you think that technology and digital projects that you're working on uh, will change the quality of education in Birkin? Actually, it will change a lot of things. It would change uh, quality of education, if you want to say in particular, and also it could change uh, the quality of life in general, because not only students will be improved with their studies or education, also uh, um, all sectors uh, in Britain will be improved. And uh, it's, it's, you can see already some results. Uh, when I said uh, the digital administration or Annex uh, 5, that is next to high up, it's uh, a digital and you can see that get uh, it got very good uh, results. Now other Qaid and other annexes are trying to apply the same experience. So uh, uh, you can find that it will be a very good improvement in uh, all sectors uh, in life, not just education. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. We'll move to Mr. Uh, Mohammed Amin Shoshi. 
Okay, thank you so much for letting me speak. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mrs. Ian. Uh, we are very, we are very honored to be, uh, to be with you tonight. And uh, I, I do have a note and a question. The note is uh, when you said that uh, when your brother were, were, was working uh, on digital and the uh, region oriental came and you said that no one was interested. So here I see that there is a lack of motivation. They, they do not motivate people, so they go on. And also you said that the, uh, this year, uh, the regional orientation came to see the results, what the governor uh, was doing. So he, they, they well, uh, what I get in here is that uh, even though there is no motivation, there is some people that will keep working until, until they, they deliver, uh, you know, they deliver results. And these results can be one of the reasons to, to grab attention. Mm -hmm. And we see that after the, after, uh, you know, like uh, the results were good, and they started motivating. So what do you think about motivation in, in Birkin? You know, like in general, if we can say, uh, do we have that sort of motivation that should be, or like we, we are lacking some, some stuff? Actually, uh, if you are talking about motivation, you are like talking about positive thinking. Uh, in being positive in a, in a very bad uh, consequences or very bad, uh, I mean, lately it's a little bit hard to live. Uh, it's it's a little bit complicated because it will depends of how people are uh, fighting that inside of them. Uh, for me, I think uh, uh, motivation uh, can come always from positive uh, thinking. Or you can see it's always going from gratitude. For example, you uh, as a student here, I can see a lot of students, mashallah. So all the students, you are here. First of all, you are lucky to be to be in high up for many reasons. You can have discussions, you can have activities, you can, you can feel that you are having a nice environment. I guess thank to uh, Mr. Khalid and his family. I really, really uh, appreciate what they are doing because from my bottom of my heart um, that I saw, oh, you can see creativity and motivation on him and his family. So this is, you are, if you are already uh, grateful for what you have, you will be uh, positive in your life and then you can be always motivated. So it always starts from gratitude. If you are gr grateful for your parents of what they are doing for you, you are grateful for your professors, what they are doing. If you are grateful for, for, for your body, for your health, for, I mean, you can see that on our religion and then everything will come with it. You will be positive. You will be motivated. You will be patient. I really recommend patient. It's really the key for everything, the patient, the gratitude, and uh, the positive thinking. I guess these things, if you don't have it as always on you, you, you won't go so far. And also uh, to be, uh, to look the other one, always do the comparison. This is the worst thing you can do, to compare yourself to another one. Uh, I had students with me in classes uh, some of them got always 18, 19, and others always get 10 on 20. But when you are, after all these years of studies, you can see that the guy of 19 on 20 or 20 on 20 didn't go further. But you can see the one that he always had 10, 11. You can find that he's, I don't know, a scientist, a doctor, anything you can. So uh, comparison, it's a bad thing. And also when you are uh, uh, seeing that, why he had that and not me, it's like greedy or something. I don't know how the name it, it is. It, it, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. So this is the main uh, things to, to be successful and to be just thinking about, to be focused on what you have. That's a good question, by the way. Yeah, th thank you so much. And I do agree with you. We should not uh, compare us uh, with others. We should focus more on self-development. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you both.
Well, I think we move again to high up and again yeah. with Mr. Ayub. So what is your reference? So like from the way uh, I seen you speaking, you seem to have like so much a, level, a huge level of respect to Mr. Governor, to Mr. Uh, Governor. So like, could you describe what type of man and leader he is and what's his purpose? Okay. Well, first of all, if I say many words of it for him, it won't be enough because to describe someone who has a vision, someone very respectful, and someone who has uh, who who is a good listener, who's an, who's adventurous. Uh, I notice on him the the team uh, team leader. Uh, when you are talking about the leader, you, you don't feel him that he's your boss and giving you orders. You can feel him around. You can feel him going with you in the flow, with the flow. And uh, you, you can feel that, for example, starting from me that I am a woman, I can see really, really high respect for women. Uh, I can see in him the, the really good listener. And also... In, just say something, an idea, and he will discuss it with you. He will uh, uh, listen to you. He will uh, put questions. He's always ready to learn. He, he, he gave us an, a good exa example of a good leader uh, and a good person in general. I wish if I could, I mean, bring him to you and all of you to see how he react. And uh, we, we saw... We saw him in a different uh, situation, and every situation, he was a very good exa example of a good leader. We are all of us as a team, take, making him uh, as one of uh, as a, a mentor for us, uh, an idol for us. So uh, it's he's a really good guy, and Berkan is lucky to have him as a government a governor. Sorry. Yes, and I totally agree. I mean, you could clearly see the difference that he's made. Yeah. Yes. Thank yeah, you. you cannot imagine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Ilham. It is just an amazing session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank just you. wonderful. And I'm sure, I'm one million percent sure that the students are so excited and they want to meet you. I'm, I'm, I know them. Oh, I, know them. I, will. I, I am so <laughs> glad to have them. You know, because you have touched the points that you really, like you have touched their hearts. Yeah. Um, when you spoke about creativity, because it is one of their priorities, every day we speak about it. When you spoke about respect, when you spoke about, uh, there is about gratitude, Mr. I know, Mr. You, when you were speaking about gratitude, you know, the junior, the, the student was uh, in, uh, yeah, yeah. in one of the rooms there. He is. <laughs> so excited. Yes, she's speaking about she sa he says it is my line. Gratitude is my line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's really, so really impo uh, important. I mean, I, I I really like what you are doing, Mr. Khalid. And sincerely, the um, I you can say that I've I've been working on myself a lot and I had professors like you who uh, made change on me. I won't I won't say that I didn't had bad ones uh, or ones who really I don't like even to remember them. But I had others that really pushed me forward and really made me what 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 I like to be now. And uh, believe on yourself. That's that's a good thing and. Uh, especially great uh, gratitude and especially all this principle that you can that can make you a very good person that's uh, how it is and I, I think they are all lucky to be with you Mr. Khalid and uh, your family uh, because every time I see you I can feel that you are like me it's it's something that I share in common and seeing them it's really Today, maybe I wouldn't be able to sleep because I'm <laughs> so happy how they put questions and how they were, I mean, uh, this interaction. I had it before when I got uh, some of your students with, with your wife at the Fab Lab. I, I was so excited that night. 
And today again, I, I'm excited again because he, he, uh, this is what I looked for it for years. This is why I didn't leave my country, just because to see examples of this and uh, to be happy to share and uh, happy to bring others aboard. Maybe I, I would love to, if someone uh, has something uh, plus that I don't know, can share it with me and teach it to me. That will be very, very nice. This is how exchange is. And uh, I really appreciate what, what I share with you. They were telling me, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm the one who, who's uh, thankful to be with you, all of you guys. And uh, uh, especially, uh, I mean, the one who were listening, the one who were interacting, uh, the effort of Mr. Khalid to put all the equipment to, to make this meeting uh, done. It's not easy. Uh, I appreciate all of you one, one by one. And uh, thank you again for everything.